Okay, so for the interview today, your name will remain anonymous, but your um, PS4 username will be in it. If you want me to blur that out, I can absolutely do that. Um, also, if you want to skip a question or if there's any questions you don't feel comfortable answering, just let me know. And if you want to um, delete the video interview entirely, then that's absolutely fine. Just let me know. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so just plain and simple to start off with, what was the first game you ever played? Um, I think it was Crash Bandicoot for the PS1, I think. Okay. That's great. Um, do you know when you played that? Uh, ooh, it was when I was younger, like seven, eight year old. Yeah, I thought that. Okay, so which game that you've played do you think has the best art style and why? I'm going to say World of Warcraft. I haven't played it a lot, but once I have played it, it's been like the best um, for just arts, the art style mm -hmm. in general, because each world just feels different when you go into one. They're all different and unique, and they're obviously based off the characters that are in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Like the bright colours, there's loads of different things. You just feel you can immerse yourself in that world because of how realistic and how good the art style actually is. Great. Oh, that sounds really good. Um, so, does the art style of a game persuade you to play it? And if so, why? Um, yeah. If the art style is kind of drab and dreary, I'm not going to play it. But I'm I'm normally huge on like I've cartoony game. Uh, <laughs> game styles and also I like things like Mario Super Mario Kart, I've played that for years, Crash Bandicoot I've played for years, um, but also I do like realis realism as well, that's very important to me, because if, if a game's not realistic or like good looking I won't play it, mm -hmm. so things like I love Far Cry, the Batman series was really fun to play, so those, so realism is very important to me, but I can play more, more styles of game, but the main ones are cartoon and realism are really important to me. Cartoon and realism, okay, that's great. So if it's like, obviously not a realistic game and it's more of a cartoon, but it's like amazing animation and all the scenery looks great, does that, does that call out to you as well? Yeah, definitely, 100%. If it's, if it's, if the art style's good and the artwork's good, it doesn't feel tacky or, mm -hmm. or uh, not good, then I, I won't bother. But if it's good, say like Crash Bandicoot's all, always been really good and re like, all appealing to me, so I always come back to that game, especially Mario Kart as well. I always come back to that, just how, how good he actually is. Like things, like things stick out to me, like Bowser's Castle, things mm -hmm. like that, and Rainbow Road nostalgic. have always stuck out to it. Nostalgic, you know, it brings back like memories of me when I was playing with a child and I can just play it all day, every day. Yeah, great. Okay, so do you know any artists or animators that have contributed to games? And if so, who are they? Um, not really. I normally go towards like their, just the game itself. I see trailers of a game that looks really cool. I will just buy the game based on that rather than who actually made it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do know of a couple of people, that, a couple of like, company that's done open world games. Okay. They're called Biz Bizarre, I think they're called. They create like amazing uh, uh, art worlds that are full of art and color. It's really good. They're really, really good at the craft. And they've, mm -hmm. I feel like they've mastered it over time with years of experience of doing those sorts of games. Yeah, they're new really technology good. Technology as well, isn't it? So. Yeah, they, the next gen, obviously, next generation consoles does help that. Because mm -hmm. the more technology advances, the more the gaming industry gets better with the graphics and stuff. Mm -hmm. The more better open world and art designs are going to be so much better at their craft. 100%. Oh, let's just kill this person before we carry on. <laughs> yeah, I, I got him. I, I need a medal, badly. Okay. That's fine. Um, okay, so what do you consider to be good game art? Uh, ooh. I'm going to say good game art is a game art that sets the mood for the game. So if the game's going to be sad and upsetting, it needs to be dark, moody, it's got to be like very bleak and dim. Or if it's going to be a happy game, I want there to be bright lights, it's got to be flashing, it's got to be very like upbeat. So it's got to, the game art sets the tone for the rest of the game. If if the tone of the game is doesn't correlate with the game art, it doesn't really make, it doesn't appeal to me really. Because like, if the game's bright and colourful and the game's da like got a dark, story to it then it's just pointless yeah. like, it doesn't make sense there needs to be a correlation there 
the the mood of the game the game out around the the mood of the game has to reflect in the game out around it. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's it's quite important within a game. It actually sets the mood, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So, what would you actually consider an in-game enemy or boss to look like? Ooh, uh, I've played a lot of them. I've played a lot of games with a lot of bosses in them. I can tell you for a fact that they do vary depending on the game. Some games, realistic games, mainly will have bosses that are like human-like. Mm-hmm. So things like Far Cry, their bosses are all human-like. They are humans. They are meant to be human beings. Uh, the cartoony games or the cartoon characters or so things like Bowser he's becoming iconic because how good the game art of him is mm-hmm. because how well designed he is and the game of the game artists have done him these iconic he sticks in pop culture all the time but if it's a mystic, mystical game I expect the guy to be big flamboyant full of, has magical powers bright colours coming off him uh-huh. so it just depends on the game really yeah that's great it does vary doesn't it yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever felt emotion when viewing game art? And if possible, could you describe that? Uh, yeah, I have felt a lot of emotions, like, or like, think I felt in awe of the surroundings, like a game that has good, good game art, and like an open world game that'll make you immerse in the game because of how good the game art looks. You feel like you're there in the game. Mm-hmm. Also, horror games, I feel scared because how bleak and dark it is, and like the set, the game art makes it. You feel like you're actually there and you actually could be hurt or affected by the character chasing you down in a horror game. But also, mm-hmm. I've felt upset and sad in games before. Oh, um, could I ask which game you felt sad in before? Um, I felt really sad in The Last of Us because when you play through, uh, you, the game art makes you feel like you are the characters of like the main characters. And when Joel dies in it, it really hits home. Because you felt a connection to the game, because how good the game actually is, he feels real, like it's a real person that has mm-hmm. just died in front of you. So yeah. you kind of feel, the game art makes you feel the connection to the character. Yeah, I've witnessed that um, death before as well, it wasn't the best. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, do you prefer games that are traditional, such as Swords and Warriors, games that are mythical, such as using powers and battling creatures, or futuristic games that involve high power weapons in dystopian-like settings, and why? It's a tough question, because I've played a lot a lot of games that across all the genres that you mentioned, the, mm-hmm. the historical stuff, the mystical stuff, and the futuristic stuff. But what I'd probably just drawn to most is probably the futuristic dystopian stuff, because get, it, it might give you a snapshot to the future, and I'm a very much a sci-fi fan, so I'm interested in like future scientific stuff that are beyond our understanding things that because the because the possibilities are endless of what a game a game art could be about the future. They could make games so interesting and unique. Mm-hmm. Things like games like Destiny with the spaceships, the, the like different multiverses, things like that, like universes around us. It, it makes it feel makes me take me away like on a venture to somewhere that I can't go in the real world but mm-hmm. on a game it's possible anything's possible in games it is it is game art is really powerful because obviously nothing is it's fictional and yeah a lot of people with games um they go there to escape reality and that's, that's amazing yeah but yeah um, that's, that's the main drawing power obviously um on the topic of sci-fi I can see that your skin is a predator so I can definitely say you like sci-fi. I do, yeah. I'm I'm a big, big sci-fi fan. I love Predator, I love Alien, I love all the sci-fi films that are these staples, like Blade Runner, Blade Runner especially. That If they made a Blade Runner game, it'd be amazing because of how good Blade Runner is. Mm-hmm. It's just such a good influence. I can see the influence of Blade Runner everywhere with how some games look like Blade Runner because mm-hmm. how, how that set the trend for people about futuristic stuff. So obviously it was in the 1980s when Blade Runner came out. So they then they set in the 2049. So it's very much a case of it's based on their idea of like how the future could look. Right. That's great. Um, thank you for taking part in my interview today. Is there any more questions you would like to ask me? No, I think I've I think I've recovered everything. Okay, great. Thank you for taking part. You're welcome.